Hey guys, the Skull Seeker here. Today we are going to be looking at the skulls from four different species of canid animals. So, over here we have a red fox, here we have a coyote, here we have a gray wolf, and here we have a raccoon dog or tanuki. So we'll start by looking at the coyote. So, and um, the bottom jaw is actually glued on in the top jaw, you can see that in the back there. But anyway, and this one was shot right here. Uh, but okay, so you can see on this skull that the eyes are forward facing, which means as binocular vision and good depth perception. And then we have these um, large carinacial teeth, also called the premolars and molars here, um, that are used for crushing bone. Now, coyotes are omnivores, they'll eat berries and fruit as well as meat from various different animals, including birds and mammals and even insects. Um, so these teeth are used for crushing bone. These ones are used for tearing flesh. Then we have the canine teeth in the front, which grab hold of the prey and can kill it. And then we have the incisors in the very front, which are used for shearing flesh as well. They like chop off pieces and tear it. And then you can see here, the sagittal crest, which is actually very large in the coyote, along with most other dogs. So this is the determinant for jaw strength um, because the muscles attach on here and wrap around going to the bottom jaw. And so that allows the coyote to have a strong bite force and chomp down with a lot of pressure. And you can also see here it has an elongated brain case because if we compare this to a red fox, it's much shorter here. You can see, and it doesn't come to a point on the fox. And then we have another difference between the fox and the coyote. So you can see these grooves right here. They actually um, go along here. You can see it kind of looks like cracks, um, one on both sides. They make a V here, and then it runs off into the crest. Whereas on the coyote, there is no grooves there. There's no ridges. It just goes into the crest, which you can see here, the ridges and no ridges. And so also the fox has weaker jaw muscles than the coyote because the sagittal crest is smaller, um, not as much room for muscle. But the thing that's noticeable about dogs, they have a very large brain case, which means they have a good sized brain compared to their body mass. And once again, we have a binocular vision predator with good depth perception. And most predators have binocular vision because that's how they um, are so adapted for hunting because that good depth perception is needed to chase down prey. Whereas um, animals like deer don't have good depth perception because they have eyes on the side of their head, which makes it so that it's harder for them to perceive threats. Um, however, they have just enough um, depth perception that they don't run into trees. And then this one, we actually have the bottom jaw is not attached. So we can look here. So the teeth here are almost identical to that of the coyote. All of these molars and premolars are pretty much the same shape and everything. Although I'm pretty sure the coyote actually has more. Here you can see three premolars on each side. And the coyote, okay, also three. Four on the bottom, okay, they're about the same. Okay, so yeah, I guess they do have the same amount. Um, but then anyway, here you can see in the nose, That's they have a really good sense of smell. They have a large nasal cavity here. Then the front teeth on the incisors, they also have kind of serrations there um, a little bit which is good for tearing flesh. Then we'll take a look at the bottom jaw. So here we have the bottom jaw and then the hinges that basically attach the bottom jaw into the top jaw there and all the teeth. And so what we can do is we can stick the top jaw and the skull onto the bottom jaw and then it fits in these ridges 
right here. It slides in perfectly. And then this allows the skull to chomp down. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but yeah. So this allows the skull to chomp, 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 chomp. And that's how the jaw mechanism functions. Now next we have the wolf, which is much larger than the coyote and way, way, way larger than the fox. So this wolf skull had its, well, the wolf had its brains blasted out um, with two bullets through the cranium. Um, but there's still enough of the skull left here. You can um, see most of the functions and um, features. However, there is no bottom jaw um, to go with it, sadly. But you can see here the sagittal crest is also very large. Um, still not as large in proportion um, to the skull as the coyotes, which means the wolf has slightly weaker jaw muscles, even though it still has a stronger bite force because it's larger. Um, but anyway, so it has a slightly smaller sagittal crest here and still a very large brain case. And then we have, once again, the forward facing eyes. And these are actually, they actually have a smaller um, eye area here than the coyote for um, size um, proportions to the skull, which is interesting as well. Then we have the nasal cavity, um, still mostly intact. Once again, very large. We have these massive teeth here um, that were very, very powerful an extremely powerful bite from this very large wolf. And then we have the Tanuki or raccoon dog. And so Ty, my cat is upset because I'm not petting him. I really can't go through one of these videos without him getting upset. Um, okay, and then the noticeable thing with the Tanuki, so this is actually pretty interesting. So I'll put the red fox here because it's of similar size. So this is very interesting. So if you put these skulls next to each other, you can see they have a totally different um, setup in the anatomy because you can see that for these to be equal, this would have to be sitting like this. So this is them sitting at level um, height, which is funny. Um, you can see that this one actually curves up on the bottom, whereas this one does not. It's pretty much flat here against the table. And then it also, so we can look at this from the side, you can see how this whole back part is um, not like, like it's just suspended there. It can tilt back to be like this, or it can tilt forward to be like that, which is very interesting because the red fox is not like that at all it's if you push it forward it can't sustain itself it just it just tilts itself um back gotta move the skulls farther apart so it can't stay up like this it just tilts back because that's not how the skull is designed so that shows the um how the vertebrae are attached on is differently so this one the tanuki has a higher held head that cur the neck curves down more and then this one goes more at a level height with the body but this one actually curves down um, and you can tell that based on the um uh, how high this is positioned because yeah this actually sits higher up like this in proportion than uh to the other skulls in the dog family although most domestic dogs are actually like this as well uh, very few are like the fox wolves and coyotes so then on this one we can take a look at the teeth and the top jaw so here we have the teeth, so about the same as the others. The um, carnassials aren't as large and powerful as in the coyote and wolf, um, but they're still pretty powerful bite. Then we have the cranium, which is also large like the others. And then we can see here, this one's actually slightly different. So it actually has somewhat of ridges like the fox skull. And then it has actually these um, kind of protrusions coming out on either side of the sagittal crest here, which is pretty interesting. 
And then we have the back of the skull actually curves upward quite a bit. You can see that. It actually, it's kind of hard to see, but there you can kind of see it. It curves upward quite a bit, which is pretty interesting. And then it also has all these bony lumps all over it, whereas the fox skull is perfectly smooth. So this is pretty interesting as well. But yeah, you can see the ridge here on the back of the skull and also how it lines up with the fox to be um, about the same in terms of flatness like that, whereas the wolf and the coyote both have a backwards pointing one that sticks out farther. So that's interesting as well. And we can take a look at the bottom jaw, which I have not had time to glue together yet, even though, it, well, I've had time, but I haven't gotten around to it. So here we have the bottom jaw of the tanuki. And you can see the shape as well is different than that of the fox, so I guess I can compare those two. So then we have the front teeth, the incisors, which curve forward. And now we will take a look at the fox bottom jaw to show exactly why um, the skull is positioned the way it is when it's resting. And you can also see here when the top jaws are together with the, um, so they actually are pretty much the same in terms of position and how they both sit almost flat now. Um, so here we can see that without the bottom jaw attached, they're honestly about the same. However, the Tanuki has a wider skull. Um, but if we look at the bottom jaws here, so we'll slide these over and look at the bottom jaws. So these are actually different setup. So we have the fox here and the tanuki here, and you can see um, the shape. So this one, of course, is flatter on the bottom and then curves upward, whereas this one is pretty much completely flat across the front, and then it goes like straight up here in the back. And then actually is higher up too with um, the positioning of the part that attaches onto the um, upper jaw. So th it's actually very interesting to compare all these. And yeah, they have a whole lot of differences and similarities in them. So once again, we will put these back together. So we have the fox. Then the tanuki. We can get that. There we go. Okay. So then here we have the four canine species that I have showed you today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.